Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good day to all of you. At the outset, let me uh, express my deep thanks to His Excellency Dr. Uh, Junaid Zaidi for inviting me to deliver a uh, presentation today within the framework of COMSAT's uh, lecture series. My presentation today uh, will be on the uh, South-South Cooperation for Socioeconomic Development of the South, the experience of uh, CESE. I will start with a brief on the concept, history, features, principles, and modalities of the South-South Cooperation Initiative. Uh, then uh, I will uh, talk about our center, CESE, the mandates given to CISLIC uh, since uh, four decades ago. And I will brief you also about the main features of the OIC member countries, the countries or the group of countries which CISLIC is dealing with or providing its services to. And then the, the last part, which is the main part of my presentation, will be a focus on the experience uh, of CISLIC, South South cooperation in the three mandated area of statistic research and training. South-South cooperation is a bilateral or multilateral initiative among countries of the South, the developing and or least developed countries of the South, with the aim of sharing knowledge, skills, expertise, and resources through various modalities in order to meet development goals through concerted efforts and different modalities. South-South cooperation also aims to fostering the self-reliance of developing countries by enhancing their capacities to find solutions to their development problems while keeping with their own aspiration, values, and special needs. Considering its basic elements and guiding principles, the South-South cooperation is mainly based on shared experience, yeah. and common objectives and solidarity of, co of the cooperating countries. This in turn gives more important role of the countries of the South and their development partners, institutions, than that of the traditional uh, donor countries. Let me, uh, so in a brief, so in brief, South-South uh, uh, cooperation is a term historically used by uh, policy makers and academicians to describe the exchange of resources, technology, and knowledge, and know-how between developing countries. The South-South cooperation is done through broad framework of collaborating, collaboration among countries of the South in political, economic, social, cultural, environmental, and technical domains. Involving two or more developing countries, South-South cooperation can take place on bilateral, regional, inter-regional, uh, or uh, international uh, ways. Let me uh, just uh, give a brief on the history uh, of the South-South uh, Cooperation South -South uh, South Initiative. Uh, I will uh, just highlight uh, key years over the years uh, uh, to show how the initiative evolved over the time. In fact, uh, as you know, the South-South uh, Cooperation Initiative dates back to the end of the Second World War, when many newly independent South countries coalesced around shared political aspiration. At that time, these countries were neither industrialized nor socialist in the South underdeveloped regions of the world. The understanding of these countries' common interests and the mutual benefits of cooperation was received, which led to the creation of institutional frameworks of the South-South Cooperation Initiative. For example, the establishment of the Arab League in 1945 as a regional organization with the intention to draw closer relations between its member states and coordinate collaboration between them to safeguard their independence, interests, and sovereignty. Then uh, one decade almost after, in 1955, the Banden Conference which was held in Indonesia, 
Mars launching point of the first large scale Afro, uh, Afro Asian relations in terms of economic and social cooperation, where the 29 South countries representing over half of the world's population and it must be adopted a 10 point declaration on promotion of world peace and cooperation. This historical event facilitated the formation of South South cooperation because it was the first time that the participated countries were no longer colonies of distant European powers. The consensus was reached in which colonialism in all of its manifestations is condemned. The final communique of the conference underscored the need for developing countries to loosen their economic dependence on the leading industrialized nations by providing technical assistance to one another through the exchange of experts and technical assistance for development projects, as well as the exchange of technological know-how and the establishment of regional training and research institutes. Then in 1964, the first United Nations Conference of Trade and Development on TAP was held in Geneva. At the end of the conference, a group of 77 developing countries signed the Joint Declaration of the 77 Countries Group, creating the G77, the largest coalition of developing countries, these developed countries in the United Nations system. The G77 uh, group was established to promote its members' collective economic interests and create an enhanced joint negotiating capacity uh, in the United Nations. The G77 currently has 131 uh, member countries. Then, uh, almost again, one decade after, in 1978, the first high level United Nations conference on South South Cooperation, the Conference of Global South on technical cooperation among developing countries, which was held in Buenos Aires, resulted in the adoption of Buenos Aires Plan of Action, BAPA, for promoting and implementing technical cooperation among developing countries. The conference made key recommendations in promoting South-South cooperation at country, sub-regional, regional, and global levels with the support of the United Nations system and other multilateral organizations upon the request of developing countries. In uh, 1989, at the Live Live Movement Summit meeting, over 100 countries not formally attached to any major economic power group decided to establish an international organization originally known as the Group of South-South Consultation and Coordination. Then uh, in 2009, the high level United Nations Conference on South South Cooperation in Kenya, which was convened on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the first United Nations Conference in 1978, resulted in the Nairobi outcome <laughs> that uh, highlights the roles of national governments, regional entities and the United Nations agencies in supporting and implementing South-South and triangular cooperation. The conference highlighted the growing political and economic ties within the developing world as countries of the Global South assume leading roles in handling global issues ranging from economic recovery to food security and climate change. In uh, 2019, the second high level United Nations Conference in South South Cooperation, which is known as Papa Plus 40 Conference, celebrating the 40th anniversary, anniversary of the uh, Buenos Aires Plan of Action, resulted with a political declaration renewing the global commitment in the promotion and investment in South South Cooperation. The conference pointed out that South South Cooperation has made outstanding contributions to alleviating global inequality, coping with climate change, generating infrastructure construction, promoting gender equality, and enriching multilateral uh, mechanisms. The outcome document adopted at the conference recognizing that 
South-South and Triangle Cooperation contribute to the implementation of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Now, let me uh, just uh, brief you on the specific features of the South-South Cooperation. South-South Cooperation focuses on the development efforts of the countries of the South through South through different modalities, and South South has several specific features. For example, capacity development is one of the main technical cooperation features that aims at enhancing institutional and human capacities based on mutual learning and different modalities through horizontal partnerships and diversity of presented choice. Drawing on regional and national resources, South South technical cooperation delivers superior value for money and higher cost effectiveness relationship. Given the scarce resources and the horizontal relations between the partners, South-South cooperation is a demand driving type of cooperation where it is more aligned with the recipient's priorities and needs. Since the recipient, the beneficiary and the provider countries share similar development challenges, South-South technical cooperation can generally provide highly adapted relevant solutions, especially in terms of relevant technology and cultural understanding. Within South-South cooperation context, there are some uh, principles that could or should be highlighted, like the nine interveners in internal national interest, of issues, considering sensitivity of a specific context, promoting self-sufficiency, respect of independent and national sovereignty, ensuring equality between partner countries, preference for the use of local resources, diversification of ideas, simplicity and speed of implementation, more flexibility, Preservation of diversity and cultural identity. And these factors are further strengthened by their adaptation to national priorities. The modalities of South South cooperation include, but not limited to, the following four modalities sharing experiences and good practices, one or more developing countries with experience and expertise in a certain domain, exchange this experience and expertise with one or more other developing countries. The uh, strengthening of networks is another modality of South-South cooperation, where several institutions from different developing countries working in a specific domain can form a network and work together within the framework of this network. Another modality is the capacity building approach Capacity building in the context of South-South cooperation is about increasing the ability of the Southern country to promote development. The Southern countries help each other build up their capacity to promote development through enhancing institutional, maybe could be equipment purchases, and enhancing human resources capacity through training and capacity building. Uh, other modality is the partnership development approach where one or more developing countries can start a partnership for setting up a common developmental project something like Jane for joint venture the uh, now i will go to the uh, the main part of my presentation today where i will talk about our center cystic and how cystic over the last four decades uh, contributed to the efforts towards enhancing the South-South cooperation among the OIC member countries. Uh, as some of you uh, may know, CISLIC is the acronym of a little bit long um, name of our center, which is Statistical Economic and Social Research and Training Center for Islamic Countries, well known within the OIC family as CISLIC. Uh, this picture is our headquarters in Ankara. Uh, CISIC is a subsidiary organ of the Organization of Islamic uh, or Cooperation. As you may uh, recall, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation has many uh, institutions, 
almost uh, around 38 institutions classified under four categories, subsidiary so organs, specialized organs, uh, affiliated organs, and standing committees. And we are one of the six subsidiary organs of the OIC. Our center has been established uh, in accordance with the resolution adopted by the eighth Islamic Conference of Foreign Ministers of the OIC, which was held in Tripoli, Libya, in May 1977. And then one year after, in June 1978, we started our operations in Ankara, hosted by the Republic of Turkey in the capital, Ankara. Now, at that time, uh, CISIC has been given, demanded to work in three broad areas. These areas are statistics, research, and training, which are reflected in the title of the center. So as you see, uh, these three mandated broad areas are related to each other, because uh, if you want to make any intervention, call it, I uh, mean, promoting cooperation, conducting programs, projects, whatever, first of all, you need the information and the statistics. So this is the first mandate of system. You are collecting the needed and necessary, reliable and up-to-date statistical and information about our member countries, the group of OIC particular member countries. Then we analyze the statistics, which is the process of the research, the research come here, based on the statistic. And then the aim of the research is to identify the problems and challenges facing the group of OIC member countries towards or uh, their efforts uh, towards the uh, development. Uh, we are researching in both uh, the social issues and the economic issues. And then uh, this research, the main outcome of our research, as I mentioned, is to identify the challenges and then to propose how these 57 OIC member countries can come together bilaterally or multilaterally to address these challenges, which is the intervention uh, here based on the analysis and the data, uh, which is uh, the, the third mandated area given to CISRIC, the uh, training and the technical cooperation, the role of enhancing the institutional and the human capacities of all member countries. So all of these three mandated areas, the work of CISRIC in these three mandated areas, the approaches, the uh, methodologies, the programs that we initiated and we developed over the last four decades from our experience, all these approaches could go towards for enhancing the South-South cooperation in the group of OIC member countries. Now, just to give you a very, very brief, uh, I mean, on the feature of the group of OIC member countries, the 57 OIC member countries. This is important, why? Because these are the part of the developing world that CISIC is dealing with, that we are trying to enhance the South-South cooperation among these uh, countries. Uh, this is a very uh, interesting group of countries. As you see in the map, the green shaded are the 57 member countries of the OIC. The other colors, are we have five observer countries in the organization. We have Syria suspended, and we have many attempts to uh, full partnership from other uh, non-OIC member countries to join the organization. Now, all what I want to see here, to, to show you here, the, the features of this group of countries why I, I am showing or highlighting this slide? Because the feature that I want to highlight here help us, CISRIC, to really involve in the process of South-South cooperation among this group of the South. Now, the 57 OIC member countries, as you see, are located in four continents. We have 19, uh, the majority of them, uh, our, I mean, 19 countries in the region of Middle East and North Africa. And we have 21 of them in the region of Sub-Saharan Africa. We have eight countries in Europe and Central Asia, four countries in South Asia, East uh, Asia, we have three countries, and even we have two OIC full uh, member countries in Latin America, Guyana and Suriname. Now, if you look to the map, uh, the OIC uh, member countries uh, is located in a very interesting and a very important strategic region of the world, almost in the middle of the world. 
In terms of resources, the uh, this group of OIC member countries accounted for almost 25% of the total population of the world, and they constitute a significant part of the developing countries, the group of developing countries. In other words, they accounted for a significant part of the South globe, the Southern countries. In terms of population, almost 40% of the non OIC developing there is an important feature of this population of the OIC that uh, almost 52 percent of the total population of the OIC number countries uh, are young people, uh, range or fall within the group of 0-24 age. The group of OIC countries, as a group, they enjoy almost uh, 57 percent of the total global proven natural gas reserve. And almost 65% of the total global proven crude oil reserves. And the land of this region of the OIC number countries accounted for 28% of the total agricultural land in the world. Now, <clears throat> regardless of all these uh, inherited or natural resources available to this group of member countries, unfortunately. The group of 57 OIC member countries accounted for only 8% of the world total production and almost 10% of the world total exports and almost 6% of the total world foreign direct investment stocks. <clears throat> now, it seems very clearly that there are huge resources available in this group of countries which are not fully utilized for a reason or another. For development problems, challenges facing them, and that's why CISPIC is involving in supporting the efforts of these countries to achieve higher level of development, social economic development in their countries. The uh, other features, though the group is accounting a very minor percentage of the total world performance, this performance, this production of the 57 uh, countries are concentrated in a few of them. So only, according to the statistic, only 10 countries accounted for 70% or sometimes more than 70% of the total production, the total export, and the total foreign direct investment attracted to the group. So now, this is uh, the main features of the group of OIC member countries is that it is a highly heterogeneous group of countries. There are different, significant, different level of development. We have the, some member countries among the most richest countries in the world, like Qatar, and we have many countries among the most poorest countries in the world. So the 57 OIC member countries are at different development level. And this by itself could be an advantage for system. It opened to us a wide range for practicing South-South cooperation among these member countries. Though this feature from the economic point of view is a negative feature. Why? Because with this feature, it is difficult technically to bring these 57 OIC member countries together in any scheme, in any scheme of economic integration, like free trade area, custom use, or common market. It's difficult because the GDP, the gross national, income of the richest OIC member countries is equal to more than 300 times the gross national income per capita of the poorest countries. So technically, it's difficult to bring these countries together in any kind of economic integration time. But since they are a different uh, level of uh, development, uh, it gives us a wide range to practice South-South to facilitate the transfer of knowledge and experience and best practices from those countries who are doing very well to those countries who are in need to such experience and, and best practices. So now, uh, let me uh, just start with the experience of CISRIC in the domain of South-South cooperation. I'm sorry? So, so this experience over the last four decades of CISRIC, practicing South-South cooperation 
or contributing to the South South cooperation among the group of West and Muslim countries, the experience of the previous four decades is uh, this accumulated experience in the domain of South South cooperation has been documented in the United Nations Office uh, for South South cooperation publication series titled South South in Action. This is recently, last year. They choose CISLIC to publish this experience within their South South in Action uh, publication series. Uh, we and the United Nations Office for South South cooperation prepared the joint report, which is the cover of it is in my slide. This report titled South South in Action transforming potentials into shared prosperity. Uh, CISIC and the uh, United Nations Office for South South Cooperation, we have just uh, launched this report uh, during a side event of the United Nations Day of South South Cooperation on 15 September last year, virtually of course. The joint publication uh, celebrates CISIC's accumulated experience over the last four decades and provides new insights into the field of South-South cooperation. This report presented selected programs and best practices initiated by CISI in line with its three mandated areas of statistics research and training to support and enhance socioeconomic development in the OIC member countries, which is a significant part of the uh, countries of the South. The United Nations uh, Office or for South South Cooperation uploaded actually assisted contribution to establishing institutional infrastructure that promotes South South Cooperation among OIC member countries. Now, let me go uh, one by one over these three mandated areas that, and I will I brief you on the initiated our programs, activities, and projects that we developed over the 40 years last 40 years, which all, as I mentioned, lead or enhance the contribution of the center to the South-South cooperation among the group of our member countries. So in the area of statistics, the first mandated area, as I mentioned before, now cystic after these 40 years, we are considering within the OIC and even at the national and international level, we are the main and only statistical and information data bank on the group of OIC member countries. We are hosting and updating the only, uh, in one place, huge statistical database. We call it OIC STAT database. And this uh, database currently includes 1,200 socioeconomic indicators categorized under 26 categories alphabetically covering all the socioeconomic areas and fields, maybe alphabetically I can say from A, agriculture, ending with Y, Europe. And the, 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 the importance of this database is that, as I mentioned, the only database on this group of member countries that you can find in one place and in the three official languages of the OIC, Arabic, English, and French. And our team here in the center is updating this database always to keep and to host the necessary and needed statistical data and information that help the number of countries be aware and know of each other's details, each other's potentials, capacities, and needs. And this is necessary for practicing the South-South cooperation. Because if you want to bring two countries or more than two countries in any kind of program or project, uh, modalities of South-South cooperation, these countries, you should know, you should know each uh, know uh, about each other capacities and needs. You see, then uh, uh, in addition to this uh, huge database, we are assuming the role of the only one cooperation forum within the OIC framework in the domain of statistics. We call it the OIC Statistical Commission. We are assuming the role of the secretariat of this commission. This commission is similar to the United Nations Statistical Commission. CISI, as the secretary of this commission, organizing the, uh, the annual session of this commission at the level of the heads of the National Statistical Institution. We bring the together under a specific cooperation agenda. 
in, in our headquarters here in Ankara. And we have the flagship seismic statistical capacity building program. Why? This is well known among all the national statistical offices in our member countries. We are trying to enhance the technical capacities of these important institutions. You know why? Because mm -hmm. these are the national institutions which produce the national statistics, the national figures. So we are giving a high importance that these statistics, national statistics, should be at the very high level of quality and in line with the international standard. Why? To help these countries uh, introduce or develop accurate policies and trust strategies. And then, of course, we have other statistical tools and publications like the uh, Statistical Year Book and Statistical Outlooks and other uh, information. Uh, this is uh, very quickly uh, some details on the statistical capacity building program of uh, CISNIC. We created in 2007, we initiated in 2007, and we are sending every two years a very simple questionnaire to all the national statistical institutions, asking them to identify a list. We have a list of technical statistical aspects just to identify to us whether they have the capacities to provide the training on these uh, technical aspects or they need that training. And then when we receive the responses, we match the needs and the capacities by sending experts from the countries who have the capacities to those countries who need that training for short-term training, statistical training courses, uh, maximum one week, and we cover the cost of the experts from our budget. And this is a good model of South Africa's cooperation. You know, we are facilitating the, uh, the exchange, the transfer of the knowledge and experience and best practices in one of the very important domains, which is statistics, which help our member countries to produce the quality and reliable statistics for their policymakers to develop accurate policy. Of course, we, we implement this program in different three modalities. As I said, through sending experts to, to, to give short training statistical courses or the other modality, technical missions. Sometimes some statistical offices, they have good programs and practices and we, we want to transfer it to the other countries. So we bring some uh, experts from these countries, needed countries to the, to the country with this experience to spend one week or two weeks as a technical mission. Or sometimes other modality we are organizing training workshops or online training courses. The uh, OIC Statistical Commission, as I mentioned, which is very important and the only OIC cooperation forum in the domain of the statistics, statistics is assuming the role of the secretary since 2010. We are organizing the annual uh, session of this uh, uh, commission, which are the heads of national institutions. And this is this is considered by the United Nations Office for South South Cooperation. They choose this as a unique approach for strengthening solidarity among the members, countries of the uh, based on South South Cooperation principles in the domain of statistics. Now, uh, when we come to the uh, research, as I mentioned, the statistic uh, by itself is not enough. You have to analyze the statistics. Uh, the, 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 the reason behind the analyzing of the statistics, which is the, practice, the research process, is to measure the performance of the global peace countries and to identify the problems and challenges facing them in a wide range, of course, of socioeconomic developments, because our origin mandate given to us in this uh, mandated area is read as follows. We have been requested to study and evaluate the economic and social developments in the member countries to help generate proposals that will initiate and enhance cooperation among them. So how we implement this original mandate over the last four decades? Through different uh, approaches. And the main one of them is preparing the technical background reports in all these socioeconomic areas and submit them to the periodical ministerial conferences, sectoral ministerial conferences within the framework of OIC. The OIC has a wide range of ministerial conferences and a wide range of socioeconomic issues. Ministers of Agriculture, Ministers of Trade, Ministers of Health, Education, Youth, Gender, and to all these ministerial conferences, CISIC is preparing what we call it 
the technical background reports where we submit to the ministers and we present to the ministers who are the policy makers in our member countries, we present them the current situation, first of all. So this research, technical background reports, uh, included the three important uh, elements. First, based on the statistics, we, we said to them, look, this is the current situation, the performance of our group of our member countries in, for example, the area of agriculture, they are doing such. And we compare this performance with other groups, the average group in the world, like the group of developed countries, the world average, and other groups. And, and, and then we identify the problems and challenges, technical problems and challenges, facing them in that area, for example, in agriculture. The problem of scarcity of water, the problem of technology, agriculture technology, irrigation system, whatever. Then the third element we propose to them, the policy uh, oriented recommendations and proposals, mainly not at national level. These reports do not include recommendations or policies at national level. Why? Because each country has its own strategies or policies at national level. But we concentrate in our proposal or policy recommendations on the multilateral recommendations. How can these countries together or bilaterally or a group of them? Then come together to address these challenges and problems and to improve their situation in this area. So, our research is contributing to the policy dialogue within the OIC uh, countries under the umbrella of the OIC uh, organization. Organization of the uh, These are, you know, the well known systemic sectoral. Technical backing round reports. We have almost 13 areas. We are covering 13 areas. Uh, the, the traditional economic sectors, I mean, um, like uh, agriculture, tourism, water, whatever, and then some social issues, health, education, gender, labor, whatever. And uh, as I said, we uh, we prepare these reports based on the statistics, most recent statistics in our member countries. Sometimes you are using surveys, sending to the member countries. And this is the other thing that I want, I want to mention here is that after these four decades of experiencing and research, we are considering the main, actually, the main research arm of the OIC. Statistic is the only OIC institutions which submit to the ministerial conferences such kind of technical reports. Uh, after this uh, experience, the organization, the OIC, started to ask our center system not only to prepare these uh, reports but to prepare also some strategic documents and to operational programs for each of these areas and fields. So our center system prepared over the last few years some of these strategic and technical cooperation frameworks like the OIC strategic Center program of action, like the OIC labor strategy, like the OIC gender strategy and many other so this is this is the connection between how SISTEC contribute to the South-South cooperation among the OIC member countries through the mandated area of research. So we start with evaluation of the evaluating the performance of the situation of the group, identifying the problem. Sometimes you are highlighting in our report some success stories from some member countries in order to facilitate transferring them. And then uh, the, the, the policy that we suggest at the end and uh, the, the, these policies sometimes and over the years have been converted among some member countries in a very good uh, cooperation relations and even some institutions have been established based on some of the recommendations of CISIC. Some of the Islamic Development Bank unit in, uh, in uh, like the International Islamic Cooperation for uh, Export uh, financing IFTC. This was in the 80s and 90s, is a proposal by SISTIC, for example. The OIC Stock Exchange Forum also is a proposal by SISTIC and, and many others. So the, the research of SISTIC contributes to South South cooperation through contributing to the policy dialogue among these member countries. Now, the third uh, mandated area, which is the training and the uh, technical cooperation, which is the most direct area. All our initiative and programs here directly shows 
uh, our efforts towards enhancing the South South competition among our combatants. Now, we have what we call the, the matching needs and capacities short training courses. This is, I gave the example on the statistics, but not only statistics, we have 23 specific sectoral areas of matching needs and capacity, like central banks, agriculture, health, stock exchange, public credit, railway, diplomacy, tourism, environment. These are some examples of them, 23. What we are doing there, as I said to you, we have very simple questionnaires. We call them the needs and capacities questionnaire of our number countries. By the way, they are all available on our website in three languages of the OIC. But we are sending periodically these questionnaires to the relevant national institutions and ministers in our member countries, asking them in each area to define to us what kind of technical issues they need training or capacity building, or the opposite, what kind of these technical aspects that they can provide the training on them. And then when we receive the responses, we match them. And we are sending experts, as I said before, for what we call the short training courses, short-term training courses. Uh, just for example, I mean, I will mention some of the examples later. Uh, if, if, for example, some countries uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa who are producing cotton, for example, we have cotton training program. They want to- Hello, excuse me. Uh, can we have some more time for question and answer also? Yes, after, after I will finish the presentation. Can you please do it quickly? I, I have three slides maybe only. Anyway, okay, quickly. Thank you. So Thank this, you. Is, this is the example. So we are sending some, uh, some experts from national cotton institutions from member countries like Turkey or Pakistan or Egypt to those countries to group. So this is one of the modality. Uh, the modalities of this uh, training uh, capacity building program, uh, I have mentioned it before, short training courses, study visits, and training workshops. Uh, just to mention this, why I want to mention this, this is the flagship program of CISLIC. We are assuming the implementing body, the executing body of this program. This is an OIC program, OIC vocational education. Vocational education is important, as you know, in our member countries. Why? Because uh, we will not just depend on the conventional or the official education, we need technicians, we need technicians, especially in the manufacturing and service sector. So this program aims to improve the fit. Uh, uh, sector in our member countries. We have again different modalities and we have for this program the strategic roadmap every five years. Uh, just for this program, I, I'm, I'm pleased really to, to inform you that this program, the OIC VET program, has been recently highlighted by the United Nations Office for South South Cooperation in volume three of their publication titled Good Practices in South South and Triangle Cooperation for Sustainable Development as a modality towards the achievement of sustainable development goals, SDG 4, on quality of education. Uh, of course, of course, we have uh, other technical cooperation modalities, like we are hosting networks, some networks among the OIC member countries, some portals like OIC Health Portal, OIC Water Portals, uh, the OIC uh, Occupational Safety and Health Network, and other networks. And we are signing and used with all our partners, which I showed you in my last slides. But the very important thing that I want to mention here in the technical cooperation modalities, we are contributing to a long term uh, transferring capacity and expertise program, which we call the reverse linkage program. We contributed them together with the Islamic Development Bank. Just to mention, we have contributed to the reverse linkage project between Pakistan and Turkey on earthquake seismological research. We also contribute to the reverse linkage project between Turkey and Bangladesh on developing the capacities of cotton and the reverse linkages between Turkey and Sudan on the development of the African city of technology. Now, if you ask me, we are not alone while we are implementing all our activities and initiatives. We have strategic partners and we classify them under these four groups. First, according to the priority, the national institution. Our main partner are our national institution in the member countries. The second partner is the other OIC institution working in the similar domains with CISTIC. And we have the international institutions, especially the UN agencies. We have a very good technical cooperation with all the United Nations agencies, and sometimes with some active NGOs as civil societies in our member countries. 
I would like to stop here my presentation in here. I would like to thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you.